It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Um, all right, this next question is from Danny. Uh, Danny said, I want to retire early. I'm putting 15% in the Roth 401k. Should I put 10% in brokerage accounts or pay off my mortgage early or both, 5% and 5%? So my name is Danny. I didn't tell you how old I am. I'm saving 15% to my 401k. I've got another 10%. Do I build in a brokerage or do I pay off my mortgage or do I do a mix of both? It sounds like Danny needs financial, a financial order, order of yep. operations because we answer that completely and specifically um, in a lot of ways. Because what I heard, and we all know, by the way, if you want to go down with this, I keep holding it up. Like everybody <laughs> just knows automatically where you can get this. Just go to moneyguy.com slash resources. You too can get a free copy of this. And then we even have a deeper dive course for anybody who wants to accelerate yep. their wealth creation. So, so here's the thing. I like 15%. 10% was around forever. There's books that I've got behind me that talk about the 10% savings rates. The problem is those books were written in the 90s, 80s, and um, you could just count on your pension. Yep. But now that people are, you're on your own. I mean, yeah, we have Social Security and you're likely to have some version of Social Security. It's hard to count on you know, pensions. It's hard to count on Social Security. It really, a lot of the risk falls on your shoulders in this new modern world. So you better save like that responsibility reflects that. And that's why we always talk about having a savings rate around 25% of your gross income. So hearing you have 15% in your 401k, you have another 10 that could either go into brokerage or something. That's good. That's what it needs to go there. You didn't hear me say mortgage yet because we haven't crossed over the 25% financial mutant savings rate. Where does mortgage fall into, by the way, on the financial order of operations? Nine. Low interest debt. And, and here's why. Because I, I think I get a bad rap on this, and I love people being debt-free. I love you to be debt-free after you're over 45 years of age. Uh -huh. Because there's this weird thing, and people don't seem to, to, to take into account where you are in your stage of life, where you are with income, and then where you are with the compounding growth of your army of dollar bills, because those things are all interconnected. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, when you're in your 20s and 30s, life's coming at you fast. You're figuring out your career. You're also probably getting married. You're starting a family. It feels like there are so many things pulling on your back pocket with the kids, with life, that you know you just don't have a lot of money left over. Mm -hmm. But here's what's, what's so in conflict. When you're in your 20s and 30s, every dollar you have is worth so much more. That's why when I, here's a coping mechanism. If you look at a peer and you're like, man, I wish I had their money. I want you, if that person's 15 years older than you, you likely do have more money or at least more opportunity if you use your money wisely. Why do we have this koozie that says this $1 beer cost me $88? It's because a 21-year-old is drinking this that retires at 66, has the potential that that $1 could turn into 88. You know what happens for the 40-year-old? That money could turn into $7. Which is so still great, so it's still but it's good, not 88. But, I mean, you, we cut it by a factor of over 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's why while you have no money that's available while you're in your the messy middle, the 20s and 30s, while you're figuring out the career, it's important to get some money working mm -hmm. that can actually have the potential to grow for 45 years. So that's why we're pushing that. Now, here's what happens after 45. First of all, you've hit that magical number. We know from the research at the Ramsey Solutions that the typical millionaire crosses that threshold around 47 to 49 years of age. Has anybody ever really thought about what that means? That, that is, it's a magical 20, you know, if you think about it, it's probably about 25 to 27 years after you entered the workforce, mm -hmm. your money has had enough time to really start compounding and growing upon itself. And that I think so you have a combination of things that happen after post 45. Your multiplier factor is much lower sure. because you're approaching retirement. Um, you're also, the kids are getting older, so they're not requiring as much money. You don't have as many things pulling on your back pocket. And you have the ability, the margin, the excess to let that money work. That's the time to pay off the 2.5% mortgage because you're just not giving up that much of an opportunity cost 
versus the 20 or 30 something that can really mm -hmm. take advantage of that multiplying effect. And, look, and here's the thing. Uh, we want you to be debt free in retirement. I will go on, on a limb and say at financial independence, we have a desire for you to be debt free or to have the ability to be debt free. I'm just putting that in there for my own sake. Uh, but one of the things that you said is you want to retire early, right? Well, if you're going to retire early, and when I say early, if that's before age 59 and a half or really before age 55, and you've not done the hard work of building up those after-tax dollars, yeah, you may have your mortgage completely paid off, but you're going to get to the point at age 51 where you say, okay, great, I don't have a mortgage payment. But how am I going to pay for my groceries? Where's my money going to come from? Because I can't go get it from a 401k and I can't go get it from an IRA. I'm not eligible for that Roth IRA to go pull those money out, that money out tax-free. I've got to have that bridge account. I have to have that account that's going to let me bridge the gap to age 59 and a half. So if that's one of your goals, I would let that goal, in addition to all the mathematics that Brian just shared, drive you towards what decision makes the most sense for what you're ultimately trying to accomplish.